Hey guys, Shane here. So in today's video, we are gonna go over six high-end careers that you can get into where you don't have to spend four to eight years of your life studying your life away. And additionally, you don't have to go six figures in debt so that you end up you know, spending the rest of your life paying off extremely expensive high interest student loan debt. That way you can make a really good living and you don't have to spend the rest of your life playing the game of loans. So I think it's really obvious right now that we live in a society that's pretty biased towards college. Now on one side, you have people that are willing to go six figures or more into debt in order to get a degree that they may not even get a job for. And then on the other side, there are a ton of amazing jobs that people completely overlook simply because you don't have to get a college degree for them. And many of these jobs have over six figures in annual salary. And if you're at a point in your life where you're wondering what field you should go into, some of the jobs in this video are probably gonna give you a really good idea of where you should head. And there's a very good chance that this video will answer many of the questions you have, and some of the jobs are really going to surprise you. Now, with that being said, we are going to start off this video with one that you might actually recognize, which is crab boat fishermen. Now, crab boat fishing was popularized by the show The Deadliest Catch, and it's basically where you go off on a big boat off the coast of Alaska and you fish for king crab. Yeah, you know those giant crab legs that you see at the buffet and then you end up eating too many of them and your stomach hurts? Well, these are the guys who catch those things. Now, the entry-level guys, the, uh, the crewmen on these boats usually make about 15K a month during king crab season. And then they make extra money during the off season by catching snow crab. And based on this, they can easily pull in over 100K a year. Now, some of the crew hands work all year round and some of them decide to only work just a few months out of the year and then they live off of what they make in those few months for the rest of the year. And in case you're wondering what the captains of these boats make, it's over 200K a year. And this leads me to number five on the list, which is air traffic controllers. And these guys make a ton of money. And these are the guys that are in those cool towers that you stare at when you're, you know, about to take off and you're trying to avoid making eye contact with the guy who's sitting right next to you awkwardly touching your hand. No, but seriously, these guys are the badasses that make sure that planes are safe and hopefully on time. Now to do this job, you have to be a really fast thinker and you have to be able to perform well under pressure. So these guys make about 158,000 a year on average, but in certain cities, they can make way more than this. An experienced veteran in a really busy populated city can easily clear over $250,000 a year. Now, number four on the list is gonna be the pilots that are actually being directed by air traffic control. So these guys make really good money and they also get to wear those spiffy outfits with the aviator glasses. And if they're really lucky, they might even get to wear one of those cool hats. No, but seriously, these guys get to fly all over the place and they basically get paid the big bucks to travel. Plus, most pilots all around the world are capped at working about 30 hours a week, so they don't even have to work a full 40 hour week. But the life of a pilot isn't all fun and games. Jet lag is a huge problem for pilots. I mean, imagine the last time that you had jet lag and then think of that was like every day of your life. And then not being able to see your family, not being able to take care of things at home is another really big problem. And it really doesn't help that you have an irregular and unpredictable schedule where you don't really know where you're gonna be the next week. But overall, if you wanna travel and get paid good money, this is a great choice. Now, number three on the list is going to be marketing manager. Now, marketing management is the process of developing strategies and planning for product or services, advertising, promotion, sales to reach a desired customer segment. Okay, so if that didn't make sense to you, then let me explain. Marketing managers basically control the communication between the company and the company's customers. So one thing that you might do if you were a marketing manager is create a social media campaign that targets a specific subset of people. An example would be millennials, for instance. So you would create a campaign for them and then you basically just get them to try to, you know, like your product more, you know, like your brand more and buy more of whatever you're selling. And if you do a good job, then hopefully you wouldn't end up on a list like this.
Now, Coca-Cola and, you know, Apple are two companies that are excellent at marketing and chances are they have really, really good marketing managers. And that's why you see those people that, you know, line up around the block to buy the newest iPhone, even though if they just waited a few days, they could probably get the same exact thing without having to wait five hours. Seriously, I, I, I really don't understand that. I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Okay, so number two on the list is going to be information security analysts. And these are the guys that protect the big companies from information leaks. And you might remember some of these huge scandals that happened to companies like Target, uh, Equifax, Yahoo, where people's personal information was leaked and it ended up costing the companies hundreds of millions of dollars and just huge like legal headaches. For instance, like Target lost about $162 million and that probably doesn't take into account the, the trust that was lost from Target's customers. You know, people probably stopped going there because of the information leak. You know, Yahoo lost about an estimated $350 million. And the role for information security analysts is really just ever expanding. I mean, some of them are even being paid to hack into their own company. This is called ethical hacking. And some companies are actually looking for people to ethically you know, try to breach their firewall and their security in order to see what their weaknesses are. And they're looking for talented hackers to join the team. So if you're really good at that, you can actually get paid to hack people for fun. Now, number one on this list is going to be database architects. Now your first reaction to this one might be, wow, that sounds really, really boring. Why would I ever want to do that? So a few years back, I used to always go to this coffee shop to study and there'd always be this kind of like older gentleman dude who'd just be chilling out, you know, watching videos on his computer. And he kind of looked like, uh, kind of like Benjamin Button, just a little bit taller and uh, darker hair. And basically one day I decided to, you know, talk to him. We, when we chatted each other up and, and we started a conversation. And he told me what he did for a living and he was a database architect. Now he was pretty experienced. He'd been working for about a decade and he was making over 250K a year. But that's not the crazy thing. The crazy thing is he was basically just a consultant for the company and he only worked about 10 hours a week on average. That is how valuable the company thought he was. And just to break this down, that is about $20,833 a month, $5,208 a week. And if you break it down to every hour worked, it's $520.80 an hour. That is how valuable he was to the company. And the crazy thing is, is if he wanted to, he could be making like a lot more money than that. He also told me that he trained his nephew who had zero experience in computer programming or any type of technical skills. And his nephew was also making over $200,000 a year, basically doing the same thing that he does, just with less experience and probably working a little bit more. And his nephew, like, you know, never went to college, never got any external training. You know, he just got training from his uncle and then he started working and then he learned from there. And this actually brings up another point, which is the importance of finding a mentor. But that's a topic for a different video. So you might be thinking, well, Shane, can you shut up and actually tell me what a database architect does, please? So data is basically important information. And this information needs to be easily stored retrieved, modified, uh, used to create other sets of information. It needs to be easily interpreted. Um, it needs to be able to, you know, be something that we can use, you know, in the real world. And also you need to be able to protect all of this information, kind of like what we talked about before. And to be honest with you, we live in an information age and being able to efficiently store and maintain information is more important than ever before and it's not gonna change anytime soon. Now, I decided to add one example as a bonus to this, and this example is basically working in any career for the government of Santa Monica, California. So what if I told you that you could live in a beautiful city by the beach and make 300K a year, working a job that usually makes probably about 50K a year, and you also get incredible benefits? Well, that job does exist and it's in Santa Monica, California. In fact, last year, over 105 government workers in Santa Monica 
cleared over $300,000 a year in salary. Now on top of that, it's also a well-known fact that government workers have incredible benefits. They've got incredibly good health benefits, insurance benefits. They get way more paid time off. And then you can't forget about, you know, the retirement plan that pays like 50% or more of your salary for the rest of your life after you retire. And one of the craziest examples of this has to be the uh, librarian's assistant in Santa Monica, California that is making over $220,000 a year. Now, I took the time to look up what your, you know, national average for librarian assistance uh, is on glassdoor.com, and it's about $25,000 a year. So this means that, you know, working the same job in Santa Monica, California, you're making almost 10 times the amount that you would be, you know, making just about anywhere else in the nation. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, how the heck did this actually happen? And it's probably, you know, a combination of crazy high taxes in California, you know, sprinkle in a little bit of, you know, government uh, corruption, and that's how you get a recipe for something like this happening. But honestly, this just shows that knowledge pays. And if you knew about this, you know, you could get an amazing job that makes over six figures a year, and you would just be set for the rest of your life. You just have to be willing to go out there and look for opportunities. Now, right now, it would probably be really hard to get a job in Santa Monica, California. I mean, this has already hit the national press, like a lot of people know about this, so it would be really hard to get into this. But if you knew about it maybe five or 10 years ago, then you might have had a much better chance of getting a job. And then you could be sipping mojitos on the beach without a care in the world. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video until the end. You know, if you're still watching this, go ahead, you know, smash the like button, subscribe to this channel for really good content. Um, also, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. You know, let me know if there's any jobs that I missed here. You know, maybe there's some, some ones that you think are a lot better than the ones I listed. Uh, let me know if you think this video sucked. Just let me know in the comments. I like any and all feedback, you know, comments, criticism. It is all welcome. And until next time, bye for now.